news about the Chinese car company BYD competing with Tesla and even outpacing it from time to time in the number of electric cars sold and revenue are often these days. And BYD seems to be launching so many electric models that it got us all confused which is what and the, what is the actual heresy of its models. And the newest BYD model for the overseas market is the C-Line 07, a 4.83 meters long SUV which is set to compete with Tesla Model Y, the car that has been until recently the number one in Europe in terms of sales. So this BYD model has to have everything put in it to compete in that segment. Is it really good? And if yes, what makes it good? The market launch of C-Line 07 in the first European countries like Norway and Germany is expected to happen somewhere around end of 2024, beginning of 2025. So the first cars are not really yet out there for testing in Europe. What I've got here is a Chinese version, which has the same electric motor and the same battery, but may differ a bit in options and multimedia and also has a Chinese GBT port to charge. But no worry, I am in a country now where I can still find some GBT ports, so I should be fine. So let's discover the new BYD C-Line 07 and see what all this fuzz with BYD conquering the market is all about. Some say that the new Chinese electric models don't copy Western cars anymore, but they seem to copy sometimes between themselves or just go for the same recipe and get in the end tens of cars with quite similar shapes. BYD though managed to shape some design language of its own in the last years. How did they manage to do that? Well, they hired Wolfgang Egger as the chief designer, the German designer that worked for Alfa Romeo, Lamborghini and Audi. And now we have the C-Line 07, an SUV which brings some coupe lines here. Is it good looking? I must admit, it is. Proportions, details, they got it all right. And I mean, I wouldn't expect less from someone who designed Alphas and Lamborghinis. Does it have a proper SUV ground clearance? Well, it does. It's quite decent, although with the long wheelbase you always have to be more careful. Well, let's get inside and see the interior. To appreciate it more objectively, try to look at it without a brand consideration. Imagine that you don't know what this car is, like tasting a wine while being blindfolded. If you don't have a perception of the Chinese car, would you say that it looks decent? There were times when you wouldn't say that, including in a BYD. I still remember times when BYD used to clone some Toyota models, but this now is a decent car, they learned it to do the right way. The design is nice, the harmony is here, the quality of the materials is here. It is spacious and these seats are very soft, although they lack a bit of lateral support. However, every time I drive a Chinese car I get to see some strange things in the multimedia system, some glitches. There are fewer here, but I have to mention them. I don't know if the European versions will have it, but this one doesn't have an Apple CarPlay functionality. You can connect your phone with Bluetooth and get some music reproduced in the audio system, but you won't get the full functionalities. Still, the whole system is Android-based, so you can install apps directly in the car system. This car, for example, has the Waze installed and Spotify. Now, there is a problem with internet connectivity of the system. So the temporary solution was to get a 4G modem in the car and connect the system to it. But you can be sure that these problems will not persist after the official market launch in Europe. 
The whole menu is in English, but sometimes when the car wants to warn me of something, it says it in Chinese. So I think that some functions and phrases have not been yet translated and updated into the system. The operation is quite intuitive, although I cannot get too much information for an electric car regarding battery, preconditioning and so on. The design of the whole digital interface is somehow light and simple, and there is this BYD trick here as well. One excellent feature is a wireless charging with cooling. Very important for a lot of phones. A nice strange thing here. There is a camera which I assume monitors your uh, attention as a driver. And it has actually a small cover. So you can cover it. Why? I can't explain that. Well, let's see how much space there is in the back, in the trunk, and if there is a frunk at all. Quite spacious here. I'm 185 and the front seat is adjusted for me, with plenty of space left from my knees, and I'm actually impressed by how much height I have left until the roof. The trunk is big, more than enough. Although the coupe line cuts a bit from the space available for large boxes. Now let's see if we have a frunk in the front. Yes, yes we do. It's not too much space here, but at least some small things can get here. This is a two-wheel drive version of the C-Line 07, which means it only has one electric motor in the back, delivering 230 kilowatts, which equals to 313 horsepower. There will be a less powerful rear-wheel drive version in Europe with 160 kilowatts or 231 horsepower. And there will also be a more powerful all-wheel drive version with 530 horsepower. So this is a kind of medium version here. But the electric motor can achieve 23,000 RPMs, thanks to which the car can reach higher speed of 225 km an hour without a gearbox. The battery here is an LFP1 from the renowned Blade series. There is a 71.8 kWh version and an 80.6 kWh. And we have the largest one here. They named it Blade because they managed to do a very thin package in the floor of about 8 cm in height. And it is actually the newest generation of these batteries, which promises to charge 40% faster even in minus 25 degrees Celsius. So, more stable in cold weather. And this battery is key in explaining why they are so successful. LFP is much cheaper to manufacture, and if 2-3 years ago LFP batteries were seen like a budget alternative for the lithium-ion NMC, Meanwhile, these guys managed to achieve record charging power and charging speed with LFP batteries while keeping the costs down. And of course, in case of BYD, the huge scale of their production also brings the costs down. Well, now let's drive this BYD. Now I have a segment with a very bad bumpy road here. And the ability of this car's suspension to absorb these bumps is quite remarkable. This road is much, much bumpier than the ones you would find in Great Britain or elsewhere in Europe. So this BID does a fantastic job in absorbing that. The car feels a bit heavy though. It has a body roll and it makes you feel its weight. On normal roads, it still feels soft and that kind of takes away a bit the sporty feeling you may expect from a 313 horsepower car. So it is more focused on comfort than on sportness for sure. But with 313 horsepower it can be pushed a bit. However, to get that effect, in normal mode you have to press the gas pedal quite deep. 
Let's see how it reacts in a sportier mode. Well, it's not much, much sporter. The car is a bit heavy though. And you can feel it even now. You see the body roll, you feel the weight. Anyway, even though it's not 2.5 or 2.7 tons like in other SUVs, but you get to feel it anyway. There is an unexplainable problem, however. At high speeds, a wind noise can be heard from somewhere around here on the other side. Yesterday I thought that it was because of the wind, the strong wind we had here. <clears throat> Today we don't have any wind, so I still can hear it on the speeds higher than 70-80 km an hour only. So I think it is an aerodynamic sound coming from the mirrors. Mr. Wolfgang Eger, wasn't there any wind tunnel in the development program of this car? Now I'll try to go to charge the car to a GPT port. The car is cold now, so I'll try to look for preconditioning the battery while going there. Let's see if I find the function here. Energy charge and discharge. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't see anywhere the the function for preconditioning the battery. Now I can not go back. Okay, that was back. So uh, energy consumption. Yeah, I see data. Okay, average. Consumption of 21.3 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers, but I don't see anywhere a function that would allow me to start preconditioning the battery. Car settings. Yeah. And since I don't have a navigation app, a native one, I don't think actually Waze will uh, solve the problem. So, no other navigation here. And I have only one degree Celsius outside. So, uh, I bet that the preconditioning is kind of necessary in this case. Okay, charge. Okay, I think this might solve the problem. Okay, no destination. More. Okay. I was wrong to say that there is no uh, native navigation app. I think this is the one. And, uh, but it doesn't work. It doesn't load any map here. It seems like without it working, I cannot anyway activate the preconditioning of the battery. Yeah, you see, it's an empty map. I guess if I would be able to choose something, the preconditioning would start automatically, but now it's, it changed to Chinese, some Chinese character combined with the English ones. So, uh, unfortunately not. And I don't see any way to activate it here in the main menu. No, I see car's data, but no other way to activate the preconditioning. Well, that's a pity. No. I guess in the European version of this car, the actual one which is to be launched on the market, this problem will be solved because the navigation will recognize uh, locations and maps and so on. So uh, it would start preconditioning when uh, choosing. But if I'm not wrong, I see something, no, this is, this is a DVR, so it's like a registering imaging, no, I, I thought that it is a symbol for the battery being heated now, but no, I was wrong. So, um, yeah, now we have uh, 286 
kilometers left of range with 53% of battery. So um, the car estimates about 510, 550 kilometers of range in total. And um, I would say it's realistically probably to achieve like 450 up to 500 if it's a continuous, not very dynamic driving. Okay, let's go to charge. And also one more important thing to state here, it's this BID is really Chinese in its manner of um, behaving uh, on the climate system. So to get the normal temperature inside, you actually have to set like 25, sometimes 24, not 22 or 23, like in other European cars. So the temperature here must be much higher to get the normal used one. Uh, I, I think it's, it may be a difference of at least three degrees more needed to be set here to get a um, normal ambient temperature inside. Yeah. So I managed to connect the car with a GBT port here. It is a fast charge, but it only gets 50 kilowatts. Anyway, I can see here that it actually pulls out the maximum the charging station can give. So um, we have like 49 kilowatts here. And the charging in this uh, GBT system, the Chinese one. So uh, you can see that the charging station has also the CCS2 port and the GPT port. It works kind of similar, but uh, you cannot just use an adapter to, to charge the CCS port because it actually also connects and communicates with the car in a different way. So you see a good electric motor, which is not just taken off the shelf of a supplier, a good battery, which is also cheap to manufacture, economy of scale, and a designer which comes from Alfa Romeo, Lamborghini and Audi, would also take care of the quality and quality perception of this car. And you've got a good product at the end. That seems to be the secret of BID. It is as simple as that. <music>